These next three questions, there's some more rounding, but this time they're significant figures. And then we're also looking at converting fractions to decimals and also converting decimals to fractions. So three questions, feel free to skip to the question you're interested in, which is marked in red. Okay, question six. We're converting these fraction numbers uh, to decimal numbers. Now, now, this is important because sometimes we want fractions, right? are these? One over three, or sometimes we want decimal numbers. So it's good to be able to convert uh, back and forth. Okay, now this is the step how you do it. What this means is, is how many times does three go into one? Okay, now I'll just do a little quick. If we had 8 divided by 4, right, using that same thing, how many times does 4 go into 8? Which is why the answer is 2. Now you probably knew that 8 over 4 is 2, but just in case you didn't know why, well it's how many times does 4 go into 8. Okay, so with that explanation, how many times does 3 go into 1? Now this might sound a little bit confusing, because what do you mean how many times does 3 go into 1? Well 3 is bigger than 1. Well it still means we're going to get some answer but it's going to be a decimal answer with some decimal signs. So this is how you do uh, these sort of fraction to decimal conversions. Okay? I'm going to write 3 goes into 1. But instead of 1, I'm going to put 1 point. I'm going to put about three, uh, put 3 zeros here. Right? So this is still the number 1. Right? But I've noticed here that we're going to get some sort of maybe ugly decimal answer. Okay? So, this is the process again. You might have learnt this last year, but we'll go through it again. How many times does 3 go into 1? Okay, well, 3 doesn't go into 1, because 3 is bigger than 1. So, it goes into it 0 times. Now, you have to put the decimal point above where it was. Alright? Now, if we went 3 goes... How many times into 1? Right? 3 times 0 is 0, right? But we wanted to get to 1, so what's the remainder here? Or how many short of what we wanted are we? Well, we're 1 short, alright? So, that remainder, let's going to put the remainder up here. Because right? we need that, that remainder is important for our, our numbers after the decimal sign. Right? So now this 0 turns into 10, because we have this 1 up here. So how many times does 3 now go into 10? Well, 3 times 3 is 9. Right? So I'm going to go... 3 goes into 10 3 times, but 3 times 3 is 9, which is 1 short of 10. So again, we have a remainder of 1. Alright, 3, how many times is 3 going to 10? Well again, 3 times with a remainder of 1. Because 3 times 3 is 9, which is 1 short of our target of 10. And notice here, again, 3, and if we keep going, we're going to keep getting this 1 remainder of 3. Okay, so our answer, actually our answer here is 0. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, and it's going to keep going forever, right? Because no matter how long we do this for, how long, however long the board is, we're going to keep getting these decimal answers. So, the answer to this question, we can write it a few ways, but I'll make sure we, uh, we understand the ways I'm writing it, is 0 0.333. Now, you can put a line there, okay? Which means that this 0 0.333, or this here, 333, three, three, is going to keep recurring uh, forever. Now, that's one way you can write it, or another way you can write it, maybe is 333, three, three, and then put a little dot there. Now, the difference between this method, uh, this method is here, this whole, from here to here, whatever's underneath this line, uh, keeps recurring. Uh, but if you have a dot over a number, all that means is that this number is going to keep recurring. But notice with this example, because there are always threes, both of these would be correct. But they might not be in, like, in later conversions, which we'll, we'll see in question two. Right? So, I'm happy with either of these two answers. Okay, let's go into question two, and let's do the same process. How many times does 13 go into 11? Okay, 13 go into 11. Now again, because I've noticed straight away that this isn't going to be a, a perfect one, Perfect as in get the answer of 2 or, or, or 3 or 4. We're going to have to have some decimal numbers. That's why it's decimal. Right? 
How many times is three? Now, remember this process, 13, and you have to do each number individually. Right? So let's start. How many times is 13 going to the first number? One. Well, 13 doesn't go into one because 13 is a lot bigger than one. So 13 goes into one zero times. Right? But if we go 13 times zero, we, we want to get to one, so we're going to have that, we're going to be short of one or remainder of one. So that's why we put the one up there. You can see that, all right? So now, how many times does 13 go into? We're after this one here, which is now 11, all right? 13 goes into 11 no times, all right? Now, 13 goes into 11 no times because 13 is bigger than 11, okay? So again, we, we're going to have this, this, uh, this decimal sign with, with nothing before it, but that's okay. We're still going still gonna to get an answer, all right? But now... 13 times 0, right? how many short of our target were we? Well, we were 11 short. Right? So now, 11 is our remainder. So now what we want is, the next one, how many times does 13 go into 110? Okay, well, let's do some work out here. 13 times, I want to go, what's 13 times 8? Let's see what 13 times 8 is. Well, doing our multiplication is going to be... 24 to 104, right? Now you can get quick at this, or you can do it in your calculator even, but I just wanted to, to sort of show how you do this, maybe in an exam, without a calculator. So 13 times 8, right, is 104, but we wanted to get to 110, so we were 6 short, so I'm going to put a 6 here, okay? Now, how many times does 13 go into 60? Well, 13 times 4, uh, 13 times 4 will be, will be 13, 26, uh, 26, we will, will be 52. Uh, I did 13 times 4 in my head. So 52, put a 4 there, is 8 short. So we'll put 8 up there. Okay? Now, 13 goes into 80 how many times? Okay, 13, 13 times, I'm going to go maybe 6. Now, 13 times 6 is going to be... 18 is going to be 78, right, which is pretty close to 80. Right? 6, 13 times 6 is 78, which is too short. And notice here, there doesn't seem to be a pattern like last time. We just keep getting random numbers, okay? So this could keep going on. So this isn't going to be a recurring, recurring decimal anymore because, uh, well, not so far anyway. So at the moment... Even though the question didn't state how many decimal points we're going to go to, I'm happy to go 0 0.846, okay? And notice that early on, there might be down the track a really long recurring one, but we're not really interested in that because it's not like this one here where it's actually really important that 3 keeps recurring. So, this is the answer we're going to work with. Okay, just a little addition at the end of this question is that after I checked my answer and I was happy with it, but I wanted to actually just type in the calculator, what is 11 divided by 13? So I was just interested because I noticed here that we kept on getting random numbers. And that's sometimes the case, but let's just have a little check of the calculator. All right, let's go 11 divided by 13. Now... Have a look here. We have 0 0.846153. Now, notice then that with our answer, we only went to 846, but thinking that there was no recurring, right? like this question here. But notice here that 846153, and after that 3, it goes 846153 again. So it actually does recur. Right? So our answer now... We're going to go 0 0.846153. And because it's going to be 846153, 846153, that pattern of numbers there is going to recur or keep repeating itself. And that's what, remember, this line means. This line means whatever's underneath the line will keep repeating itself. So that's just a little addition to that question. Okay, question seven. Now we're... Where with these numbers here, we want to round to two significant figures. And this might be a new terminology uh, for some people, significant figures. We, we did round to two decimal places uh, in a previous question, which meant 
that two decimal places meant two numbers after the decimal sign. But here, uh, two significant figures actually means a different thing. Now, the analogy I'll, I'll try and bring to the plate here is that often in maths or science, when we do some, some data work, uh, we get all sorts of numbers that have big decimal places or, or have maybe this is the number of people at the cricket ground one day. Now, we're, sometimes we're not after the exact amount. We just wanted an approximation of the amount. Okay? Now, pretty much that what, that's what this means, rounding to a certain amount of significant figures. That just means we want to approximate the number or, or how many people are at the cricket to two significant figures. Now, what two significant figures means is, okay, all we want to know is, just like when we had, for example, rounding to two decimal places, uh, we want to round to two whole numbers. Uh, what that means is the first two numbers that you actually see in the question almost. But we do have to use those techniques with rounding. Uh, you have to go to the, the number after. So if there's two significant figures, you have to look at the third number. Uh, or the number after. It's a little bit complicated, but I'll solve it during the examples here. Okay. So we have just say the cricket, we... we we worked out well, there was 2,436 people, but I wanted an approximation to two significant figures. All right? So you look at the first two numbers, all right? two, four, and then you look at the third number, which is a three, and using those rounding laws, if that, now, if that next number is in between zero and four, all right, you round down, or it stays the same. All right? But if it's in between five and nine, you round up or add one. Now we do, we do have a practice question if you want to if you want to look at that, but again, we're going to go two, four. Now, the key to rounding to significant figures is whatever's left, you just put zeros instead of the numbers that were there. Okay, now this might sound a bit stupid, but that's what this is. We're approximating to two significant figures or rounding to two significant figures. So, essentially, what we're saying is at the cricket, oh, there was about 2,400 people. Okay, so that's what the, pretty much is. So we looked at the first two, right? then we looked at the third, and because we didn't have to round up, that was our answer. Okay, the second question here in, our, in question seven is a little bit trickier because we're, we're still rounding to two significant figures, but we have a, a decimal number with some, some leading zeros. What I mean by leading is that we're working from left to right. See how there's some zeros here before we actually get to some some non-zero numbers like like six and four and nine. Okay, so the the sort of the golden rule of thumb here is that leading zeros don't count in this in this approximating process that we do by by rounding to, to significant figures. So I'll go ahead and solve solve it and see if we can we can see the pattern here. So th those leading zeros don't count in this approximation process. So zero point zero. Now. As soon as we get a non-zero number like six, uh, well, we do the exact same processes of here to, to round to two significant figures. So, so from here onwards, right? Because these are the leading zeros that don't count. So, we have first number, second number, and our third number is that important one to to look at. If it's from zero to four, remember we round down or we stay the same. If it's from five to nine, we we round up or add one. Right? So this one's four. So it's in that first category where we, we leave it the same. So we go six zero, and we've actually rounded to two significant figures. Even though it looks like well we didn't do anything here, they're leading zero. So remember that golden thumb, golden rule of thumb. Once after we get to a non-zero number, we do the same process. Okay, question eight. We are converting decimals to fractions. Now in the earlier question we did the opposite. We converted fraction to decimal. Right. But this time, it's going to be a different process again, but we're going to convert these, these three decimal numbers to, to fractions. Now, this is, this is the, the way I do it. Okay? I get this number here, and in my head, right, I times it by 100. Okay? So what's 0 0.35 multiplied or times by 100? And remember, when, when we're multiplying uh, numbers by 100 or, or 10 or or a thousand, numbers where it goes one, zero, 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 you can just move the decimal place how many, for how many zeros, okay, that's a little, little shortcut step, so you might already know straight away that 0 0.35 times by 100 will be 35, or if we move this 2 to the right, we get 35, 
So if we do that little first step, 35, right? But we can't just times it by 100 because that's, that's not mathematically correct. So if we times by 100 and then divide by 100, right? well, that's like the same as 100 divided by 100 is 1. Right? So it's, what I'm actually doing here is like a little, little shortcut step. I times it by 100 to get 35, but I have to divide it by 100. Right? But what I've done there is straight away, it's now in fraction form. Now, this might not be the, the simplest fraction form we can possibly get to, but at least it's already in fraction form. And then from there, we can simplify. So, I'll go ahead and simplify this one. Well, we have 35 divided by 100, which is already a fraction, but we want to put it in simplest form. So, that what number goes into both of these? Well, 5 goes into to 35 7 times, and 5 goes into 100. 20 times. Right, so I've simplified it down. This is the same as this. And I think that's as, that's as simplified as it's going to get because no number goes into 7 that goes into the 20 because seven's a prime number or you could have just already seen that. So that's our answer. Let's go to the second one. Let's go straight and do my, my shortcut step. Times by 100 or you can move the decimal place to. So it's going to be 6. But because we times by 100 we can't just do that in maths. We also have to divide by 100 because this little cancelling out method, you could say. So we've automatically converted into a fraction, but it might not be the simplest form yet. So what number goes into both of these? Well, the number 2 goes into, into 6 three times, because 2 times 3 is 6. So what, how many times does 2 go into 100? 50 times. So I've simplified that down to its, its simplest form. Okay, the last one, and this is a little bit trickier. Let's times this number by 100. All right, so how do we do that again? Well, let's just move the decimal place. So it turns into 107. Now we have to divide it by 100. All right, so that could be a number we could work with now. But I want to actually convert this to what they call an improper fraction, which you might have already seen already, where it's sometimes like a big number with a little fraction, okay? Like, this is just a random one I just chose. But that's what an improper fraction is. Now, what that means is that well, 100 divided, 107 divided by 100 can be written as 1, 7 over 100. So what that means is that there's already one whole number, because we have 100 over 100, but then we have this 7 left over, which is 1, 7 over 100. So th this little step you get, you get good at, but I just wanted to, to show that you could write it in this, and this could be the answer in your back of your book, but I'll, I'll, I'll do that one for now. But if you were to just simplify this down just for practice sake, uh, well, we need to find two numbers that go into these two. So I don't think there will be one on the top of my head because... 3 doesn't go into this number, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 doesn't. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to say straight away, not, I'm going to go 107 is a prime number, so no number goes into it. So, that's our answer. So sorry for doing a little bit of an unnecessary step there, but that's how we have our fraction answer.